cartoon style where you don't see any atomic detail. It's just, you know, showing that it's coiled up like this. And uh, this is a hemoglobin subunit. Almost all alpha helix, this part in gold, is not alpha helix. It's some turns and connectors that have some so-called random coil structure. But it must be, what, 80, 90 percent alpha helix. So some pre proteins, that's all they're made of. We'll look at a fibrous protein, hair protein, built the same way, just out of alpha helix. But you can fold the alpha helices in different ways to get different proteins that have uh, different active sites, different functions. So that's one type of secondary structure. The second classic type is the beta sheet, also first worked out by Linus and Boeing and his co-worker Corey. Here there's no coiling. It's as if you take this strand and you pull it out, stretch it out as much as possible. So it's just extended straight strands that hydrogen bond to each other. So we talked about the straight parts being strands, and you bring two of them side by side, they can kind of dock in parallel to make sheets. You build sheets by bringing in strands like that one that has it. Sometimes called beta pleated sheet because uh, the tetrahedral carbon makes it pop up and down in these strands. So here's one of these amino acid polypeptide chains. All stretched out instead of being coiled. We imagine we pulled it apart, and that's as straight as it gets. Uh, the carbons, again, with their tetrahedral arrangement of the alpha carbons, it tends to go, the strand has some up and down to it. But if you bring in another strand and park it parallel to it, we still have hydrogen bonding capabilities. There's an NH group, and you bring in a neighboring strand, uh, its carbonyl, the CO group, can come in close enough to hydrogen bond. So that's one hydrogen bond. Go down to the next carbonyl, you find it's got a partner. The NHs in the strand can find partners there. So you just stack them next to each other, and you make these sheets that have a little pleated appearance up and down. And the R groups stick up above and below the plane. That's what these gold things represent. Those are, those are stand-ins for the R groups. They're either above the sheet or below the sheet. And the sheet can be as little as two chains parked next to each other. Or you could have, in theory, any number of strands parked next to each other. It could be as wide as you want. So you get structures like this. Strand, strand. This green one makes one beta sheet. And sometimes the beta sheets stack on top of each other. This is how uh, silk is made. Silk is a protein. Mm -hmm. And it's made almost entirely out of beta sheet structure. Hydrogen bonds between the strands here, make a sheet, and then one sheet stacked on top of the next sheet. Okay, so it's built with hydrogen bonds, but instead of being within one strand, it's between strands, it's an interstrand. You can take the, the strands and run them parallel or anti-parallel. So this top one is an example of a parallel beta sheet. The, uh, this is running N to C. So here's an R group. Uh, excuse me. Here's a, I'm not seeing it, even the R group. Here's the amino, carboxyl. There's the alpha carbon in between, so this is N. C and C and C. So it's running that way. This strand 